Thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast. I'm so honored to have you here. I literally, I don't know, it's so weird. Like we were just talking about how we met at Q Center while we were doing Accenture training. And then now you're here on my podcast. And this is like after you've done so much in your career. It was just Barbu Agency, like with my name. And then now it's rebranded to We Bloom yeah. Social. Okay. Yeah, but I'm so excited to be on here. I mean, it's crazy at how long ago we met because I was saying <laughs> it doesn't feel that long. Like it, yeah. I remember the Q Center so clearly, <laughs> but it was like right after college. Like, it's just crazy at how that works. Like, it's just, mm -hmm. I don't know. It was, it was so long ago, and it, but it doesn't feel that long ago. Yeah. So could you give like a short introduction about yourself, your background, your interests or hobbies and stuff, but what have you been up to lately? Yeah, so I am a YouTuber, podcaster, and then also business owner. So I started YouTube 10 years ago, actually, so forever ago, um, in 2011 when I was 15. And then I started my podcast right before quitting Accenture. And then I started my agency right after leaving Accenture. So kind of everything happened around in the past one, in the past year after college, I had like got a job, quit a job, started a podcast, started an agency. And it was all like that one year. Um, and since then I've been still doing all three. I've been working with we on We Bloom Social, which is my agency. And we do social media strategy for brands. And social media is just something that I'm really passionate about in the sense of like growing businesses through social media. I think it's such a powerful tool that um, so every single industry can utilize. So that's kind of my mission is to organically grow brands through social media, through strategy um, and helping them out with that. And then I'm in the process of starting an app, which I've realized was like a pain point that me and my other like content creator friends have had. And then I've also noticed a lot of businesses had while well, I was working with businesses on the agency side and it's um, going to be an all-in-one social media management tool. So we'll have some planning, you'll have tracking goals, you'll have you know all your content ideas in one place, but you'll also actually be able to monetize by reaching out to brands and influencers, mm -hmm. um, they'll be able to connect on there as well. So we're working through that right now. I have a few co-founders and so um, we're developing that and we haven't, we finished like the design of most of it. And so we're kind of just working through, gonna develop it soon, but hopefully like raising money as well. Cause it's definitely gonna be something that we need to raise capital for. Actually, I thought that was really cool, which is one of the main reasons why I wanted to reach out to you for this podcast was the part that you were actually developing your own app. Like, where did that come from? Did that come from when you were finding all the pain points when you're working with clients and as a content creator yourself? Yeah, it was just something where I felt like there wasn't something, there wasn't a management tool for social media, especially now that there are so many jobs that are based around social media mm -hmm. i didn't find that there was one that i loved the best like i felt like they were either too corporate and like way too complicated like you needed to work at like a huge company to use one of these platforms and they costed you hundreds if not thousands of dollars a month to use or they were too limited where it was like you can just plan your instagram feed you can just plan like a few platforms but like it wasn't what I wanted. And I love using project management tools. Like I love using ClickUp. I used Asana in the past. Like I just love those project management tools that have everything in one place. Like it just makes life easy. Um, and so I wanted to do something like that with social media because I felt like there wasn't like something, like there was nothing like that, that I wanted and nothing like that, that my friends had wanted as well. And like mm -hmm. my, you know, the people I had worked with had wanted. And so I kind of thought like, what if I made this, like, what would that look like? And so um, we kind of, at first it was just going to be planning. And then I realized mm -hmm. like, if I want to make it all in one, I think a marketplace would be such a good addition, especially because I've noticed how difficult it is working with influencers on the brand side and reaching out and finding influencers that are interested. And there are marketplaces out there right now, just like they're planning things out there right now, but I just don't think they do the best job at mm -hmm. kind of adding that like human element to it without being human. So yeah. What I mean by that is like, you can just have like right now that platforms that are out there, it's like, here's the list of brands, here's you're the influencer and you can kind of pick and choose the brand you want, but brands can't really choose the right influencer with the right categories that they want either, you know? So kind of adding like very specific analytics with that. So, okay, mm -hmm. I want them to be this age. I want them to live in this type of city. I want their main demographic to be this and it kind of like populates a list of influencers for you that are on the platform. We're still trying to decide some like logistics with that, but that's the goal is to have it be more of a, like a personalized mm -hmm. approach to influencer marketing with, while still being like a software. Um, and right now I just don't 
find that there's those softwares out there. Like it's very, very just like, here are the brands that are out there, pick and choose, but nothing's like personalized or custom or anything like that, or there's no really good filters to choose from. So that's kind of the goal with that. Mm-hmm. But nothing has been like developed yet. So we'll see like the logistics of everything, but it'll definitely take time to kind of perfect. So the first round is gonna be like the planning tool. Okay. How did you go about this? Like, did you have a team in mind already or did you reach out to a few people you already knew that were probably in the engineering or design space? So I actually reached out to a friend who I went to school with and I asked him, I was like, hey, do you know anyone that knows how to develop apps? Like, and <laughs> all this, because I don't know anything about it. Like I literally do not know anything. And so about like, developing an app and so, he actually was like, yeah, actually one of my friends, him and three guys have started this like software building company. Um, I can get you in touch with them. So we got in touch and they really understood the vision. They were really excited about it. They're young. They, you know, really, they, even though they're not in the social media world, they understood it just because mm-hmm. they are in that age range. Um, and I think they're like three years younger than me or two years younger than me. They just graduated last year and we just got along really well. They designed it like, better than I had even imagined it in my head, you know? So it was just like a great team and we worked really well together. And then they approached me to do like a partnership. Like if I wanted to include them and kind of all be co-founders of this project. And, um, you know, I, I, I was looking for a technical co-founder. Like I really, I, cause I, you need one, you know, like it's, it gets expensive outsourcing it to a developer, especially if this is something constant that you're gonna need to continue to update and stuff like that. So uh, I really loved working with them. And so it's four of us, which can definitely sound like a lot, but like we work so well together and we all have different strengths. Like they're not all technical. So it's like, we just work really well together. I really loved working with them and like they really understood the vision. So it's been actually really great. And I'm I'm so happy to not do it alone because I, I don't nice. think I could do it alone. Something like this, you need someone else. And it, it can get like really, kind of tired tiring like it can get really hard and so like if you don't have someone else that like it like brings you back up as Mm -hmm. well it can be easy to give up on something like this Mm -hmm. so this was actually something i was a little bit curious about is this part of your personal brand or we bloom social or is this completely separate is this like it's its own startup in some case it's a completely its own startup it came out of my like personal pain points and also Mm -hmm. we pain points and i would love to use it with like WeBloom clients because I think it's something that would be perfect for them to use. But as of now, it's 100% separate from all of our different um, projects. Cause you know, they have their software company as well. And we're kind of going all into this together as one team and like totally separate from our other ventures. Mm -hmm. So there's actually a question I have for you as like, as an aspiring, I don't even know if I'm considered current entrepreneur technically. Uh, so like, how do you actually balance all of this out? Because every time I think about something that I want to do, it's either completely unrelated or it is, but then I might merge it. And you have so many different things that are going on that are somewhat related to social media. How do you actually decide whether you should pivot or you should do something completely different or maybe merge it with something you already have? Yeah, that's actually a really good question because it's something I struggle with in the sense of like, I feel like I'm doing so many things and I'm like, I want to make them all different, but then they all have to relate, you know? So it's just like, it's really hard. One thing I will say, like for my agency, for example, at first I started, I started um, consulting individuals. So it was like just individual people like who want to help grow their personal brand. And then I kind of pivoted to brands. Mm -hmm. So it's like still that same I guess, company and brand, but like I pivoted my structure of it. So that was like one of those things. Um, And then as for this app, it was just an opportunity that I thought I really could do. Like I was like, there, I feel like no one's out there creating something that I'm envisioning in my head. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to kind of bring it to life. And I think that it will help a ton of people, especially as the social media industry continues to grow. Um, So that was just... I guess to me, I'm thinking like, I kind of just try things out and like see how they are. And like, I'll, you know, like if it doesn't work the worst, I always say this, like, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Like it's, I had actually, when I was at Accenture, when we had met, I had an online store. So I had like a clothing company and that didn't really end up doing that well. So I just ended up closing it, but you know, I'm glad I tried. Like, I'm glad I started it and I tried. And if it didn't work, it didn't work. But I think for me, the biggest thing is just like trying something and seeing how to do it. Cause there's a lot of other ideas I've had in the past that I'm like, "Mm, 
I'll like start doing the research for it and then I'm like, eh, never mind, you know? But I'm always glad that I like try things out and then if they just don't work, then they don't work. As for like planning them with your stuff, I would just start, like start whatever your next thing that you want to do is, like whether it's a, I don't know, like a YouTube channel or a podcast or whatever, a business. And mm -hmm. like figure out, as you go on, you'll figure out if it should be merged with something, if it should be maybe merged with your podcast or if it should be something separate. Like I think it's okay to kind of change your mind in the middle of it and like mm -hmm. pivot. So I, I always give the advice of like, just try something and start it and then see where it goes from there. Because if it fails, if it succeeds, if you need a pivot, like you'll figure that out as you continue doing it. Mm -hmm. Where did you learn that? Did you learn that like growing up from a lot of trial and error or maybe it's from your parents and or even other people that may have shaped you to who you are today? I think for me, it's, I don't know what it, I don't think it wasn't like learned. It really is like a personality trait, okay. I think, or like, a, <laughs> like, I think I just like, like starting things and like doing things and like, I'm very determined. So I, th I think that's like a good personality trait that I have. But I will say when I was growing up, I never felt limited in what I could do. Like I never felt like anything held me back. Like I didn't feel like, oh, because you're a woman or because this or because that, you know, like I never felt any of that. And I never put myself in any box. Like I just kind of viewed the world as my oyster, if you will, like that expression. <laughs> like I remember when I was um, 16 and I had like, kind of like with my YouTube channel, I started a YouTube, literally I was watching YouTube for like two weeks maybe. And I was like, oh my God, these girls look so cool. Like, I feel like I could do this. And then I just started it on my webcam with like the world's worst quality and the world's worst video. But like, <laughs> I did it anyways that were like, with um my podcast i had literally listened to like two podcasts and i was like this is fun like let me just buy a mic and start it or with an online store i did the same thing and while that one didn't work i'm still glad that i tried it so i think i always and like i was saying when i was 16 i started this like personal styling business where i would like ask my my followers i was like okay like if you my fee is 20 dollars, so if you give me 20 dollars and then give me your budget I will buy a whole like outfit for you, a whole wardrobe for you, like I'll style you. So people, I think maybe I had like three clients, like <laughs> honestly, <laughs> people would give me like a hundred dollars and then give me an extra 20 for the service fee. And I'd like buy them an outfit for a hundred dollars and send it to them. And like things like that, like I always just like, I don't really, this might be bad. This could be bad. It could really, it's like a double-edged sword. I don't really think that much about things. I just like start it and then learn in the process. So it can bite you in the butt and it could be, you can make a lot of mistakes with that, which I have like a lot of things that I'm like, oh, I should not have rushed into this or I should have thought more about this, you know, but I think it's also good because you try things out and, you know, it's, it's one of those things where just, I mean, just try it. And if it doesn't work, then whatever. And if it does, then great. But that's kind of always, always the way I've looked at it. And I think no one in my family or anything like that has ever like told me I couldn't do something in the yeah. sense of like you can't be this person or you can't start this business. Like it was always like, okay, you want to do that? Cool. Like at 15, I feel like parents at, especially 10 years ago, were like, oh my God, you're on the internet. That's like stranger danger. Like that's bad, you know? And I, whether it's a good thing or not, my parents never said anything about that. Yeah. So I don't know if like, you know, back then it was like really weird to be on YouTube and it was kind of like, oh, you're talking to people on the internet, like what? So I think it was one of those things where they never were like, oh no, you shouldn't do that. Or like, maybe mm -hmm. not, you know, it was always just like, okay, if you want to try it, do it. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. So it looks like you're the type of person who would, if you have an idea and you really like it, you would go with it. So how much would you actually plan and how much would you go with it? Because I feel like there is a healthy balance. So where would you find that balance? I would say a healthy balance would be more going with it, less planning. I think okay. I'm an extreme where I'm like 90% go, like 10% <laughs> plan, which is so bad. Um, but I think that a healthy balance might be like 30% plan, 70% go, because mm -hmm. I think you can have like a super advanced business plan and a, a 10 page business plan with your financial projections and all of this. And like literally the second you start your business, it's going to change. Like it's mm -hmm. all going to change. Like your idea for your business will probably change before you even launch it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, mm -hmm. I think business plans are not the most, it's not the best use of your time. I think you should have like a document where you have your ideas, how you're going to make money, how you're going to, you know, like things like that. Like I'll have yeah. that. Like whenever I get an idea, I'll like jot it down and like write a bunch of things down and like what the plan is going to be. But I don't have a 10 page spread on how I'm going to make money and how I'm mm -hmm. going to do this and like the, 
everything that a business plan has. Cause I actually made one of those for my online store and look at that. Like that's the one thing that like <laughs> didn't even work. So I'm like, it doesn't even matter. Like, it's like, I think as long as you have some plan, mm -hmm. it's good enough. But those like really large 10 page things that you did in college and stuff, like I don't think that those are necessary. I think they really just hold you back because you're like, oh my God, I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. But like, mm -hmm. you really should just go for it and like continue to learn as you're in it. And obviously it depends on the business and what you're doing. You know, there's like different yeah. versions of that, but you know, YouTube channel is way less risky than something that's maybe more costly. But at the end of the day, I still think that just going for it is the best way to learn. I definitely can resonate with that because I know since I started my YouTube channel, I'm such a planner. I am like the MBTI thing. I'm INTJ 100% J. <laughs> so when I started YouTube, I was like, oh my God, I need to have a whole like five year plan. And then my friend was like, no, just record and see what happens. Because like, what if you pivot because you don't really like doing this? Or maybe your audience doesn't like that. And as actually, as I kept on going, it just kept on changing. I think like actually now I'm probably less J, more P where I'm more flexible, but I'm definitely seeing that like even having my own like brand, I guess, can really change how I see things because now I see an opportunity, I go for it, but now I have to make sure I don't, I slow down. Cause if I did that, I would go like pursue 10 different things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a balance, but yeah. I think that I mean, it depends on personality. It depends on, you know, your pre previous experiences. It, it depends on so much, but I think the best thing to do is just trying. Cause like, if you never mm -hmm. started your YouTube channel and you were still planning it to this day, the second you started it, it would change. The plan would mm -hmm. change, you know, like <laughs> you cannot plan things like that. So it's one of those things where you can go in with a vision, you can go in with maybe a purpose or a personal mission statement or whatever, but you can't go in with like, this is exactly what's gonna happen. Yeah. And you know, like, plan everything, like plan the next year, the next five years, or even the next like two months. Like it's so hard to do and so hard to predict. How do you exactly manage your time though? Because I feel like each time you have a new initiative, like, okay, I need to reshift my calendar. Maybe this focus will be on this day or this month. And even like when you move from New York to back to Charlotte, it's just like that whole shifted everything too. Yeah. I am trying to get better at managing my time because right now i think my calendar is a little chaotic like it's a little like i'm doing too much on too many days and where i feel like it'd be better if i if i time blocked if i was like mondays are my day to podcast or tuesdays are my day to do you know rella like this app stuff wednesdays are youtube thursdays are whatever i think that would make my life easier but it's just so unrealistic because it's hard to kind of block off everything out like to only work on one thing one day a week is like just like not realistic and then other people that I have to contact and have to schedule calls with and have to do, you know, mm -hmm. like they don't work on the same schedule as yeah. me. So I'm trying to come up with a plan and a time management plan on how to get better at it. Cause that's definitely a thing that I don't think I'm the best at, but I use like Google calendar for everything. So like mm -hmm. everything I have to do is on my Google calendar. Like if you don't send me a calendar invite, it is not in my memory. Like I'm not going to remember, <laughs> like I need, like <laughs> I need it on the calendar. So really time, time batching in that way, kind of seeing my day ahead of time helps me a lot. And then also, so I, I usually take Fridays, kind of treat it like a weekend. Like I'll like, mm -hmm. won't really work on Fridays unless I absolutely have to. And then Sundays is when like Sunday afternoon, I'll kind of like look at my week and like plan ahead and see if I can get anything done before Monday. Because I hate feeling like, oh my God, Mondays are here and I have so many emails and I have so many things to do, you know? So I kind of use my Sundays to like prep for the week ahead and kind mm -hmm. of see how my week is going to be and like how it's going to flow and like mentally prepare myself for it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what I use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I mentioned before, I'm like still an extreme planner, even though it, I'm a little bit more flexible. So I actually do that time blocking thing, which I feel like I have to because I do have a full time job. So I literally film like only two times a, a month for eight videos a month, basically. So I wow. found four videos at a time, but like, I think it's because of my niche, it's more education. I could sit in front of a camera. It'll be no problem, but you're more like lifestyle vlogging. So you kind of, you can't just do that. You could just like walk around or, I really like your house vlogs, by the way. I'm like, oh, as someone who wants to eventually do that, that is something I want to do. But that is what I realized is it's hard if you're in lifestyle because you need to show your life. You can't just right. sit in a camera, plan everything, plan life, which is impossible. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could do that though. I've tried doing that with like TikTok because I'm like, <laughs> I need to do, I need to like get on TikTok. Like that's the one thing I like cannot do. Like it's so hard for me to do mm -hmm. short form 
vertical content for some reason. <laughs> and so that, especially because I like ramble so much, I'm like, mm -hmm. I literally cannot say everything I need to say in 60 seconds, but I'm, I've tried to make Fridays my like TikTok content days where I'll like film some and like lit has not, have not done it yet. Like, but I'm like every Friday, I'm like, this is going to be the day, but I just never do it. So that's one thing I really need to do and like get better at. Mm -hmm. I have like a monthly Instagram day. I do all my Instagram content all in one day. And I feel like Instagram reels do so much better because they're not necessarily as timely as TikTok where like a trend could be for one day. I right. tried TikTok, it, it went like only three views. I'm like, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm just gonna stick to Instagram where I actually know I'm getting views. <laughs> right, I need, I like reels a lot too. Yeah, mm -hmm. anything I post on both, I'll like, I'll post on one or the other, but mm -hmm. I gotta do, do it. Like I know <laughs> that you can grow on those platforms, so I need to do it. Mm -hmm. So speaking of platforms, like, can you tell me like, what do you think is going to be your short term or long term goal for your social media platform? Not necessarily about the app or Webloom Social. Um, so like goals for like my own social media, Instagram, YouTube, podcast, or maybe something else if you're planning something. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I would love to continue growing, obviously. And, you know, like just continue posting this type of stuff mm -hmm. I'm posting. The biggest thing for me is I never want to just be a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, like at all. Like I, it's so much harder of a job than people think it is. So I, I never like when people are like, oh, like YouTubers yeah. don't do anything. Cause I think that's so false. But for me personally, I always have wanted to do something else. Like that's never mm -hmm. where I wanted to stop. So I hope that my content, instead of just being like my life, I hope that it provides value, you know, like today I didn't really do anything, so I'm not going to vlog, but you know, there are some people that like vlogging when they're not doing that mm -hmm. much and people watch it and it's, it's still great for their type of content. But for me, I'm someone that like, I really want to provide some form of value, even if it is in like a very casual way. That's like my goal on every platform that I have. Instagram, not as much, just because it's like more like just my life, but with mm -hmm. everything else, like Reels, TikTok, this, like everything I just want, or YouTube, podcasts, like I really want to provide value with things that I wish I would see on YouTube. Cause like, mm -hmm. I think there's some things like, for example, with the startup, I listened to the podcast, startup podcast, I think is what it's called. Have mm -hmm. you listened to that one? Yep. But by Gimlet Media, that one, I don't know what took me so long for listening to it because it's so <laughs> useful and resourceful, but that is that podcast has like changed my life and I'm not even done with it. And to me, I'm like, oh my God, I want to do this on my YouTube channel. Like, because people, mm -hmm. there's not that many, I feel like if you're in the, you know, let's say startup world, your videos are only about startups. They're like very, very educational. They're very, you know, like here's uh, five ways to find a co-founder. Here's this blank to do this, you know, yeah. and that's, fine because I love those videos as well, but I still want my channel to be lifestyle. So I'm like, how do I mix lifestyle with that like educational content or not educational, but like providing value content. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal for like all my social media platforms is to like provide some value, but still um, be like lifestyle and relatable and, you know, show that anyone can kind of like do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that struggle too, like, because I do actually content mostly on technology consulting and consulting, and I know that can get very dry really quickly, but I realize that a lot of people like it whenever I have videos of my cats and I like your videos of Bambino. <laughs> and I also have like some funny videos with my boyfriend too, doing like, literally, I just asked him business questions the other day and people just made fun of him on, on like for content, of course, but that that's just definitely a struggle I've seen since I went into the social media spaces that you want to make sure you're creating value but you don't want to be that dry person people go to social media because they don't want a lecture they don't want a, like an actual harvard lecture where you start to nod your head but yeah that definitely i'm i, I definitely feel for you and i also did realize recently you rebranded your youtube channel to be more entrepreneurship so was that also something that you're kind of going towards yeah so i don't really want to film like like I'm still going to film these every now and then just because mm -hmm. like every now and then I like them, but I don't want to film content that doesn't have any purpose. So like, and I guess that's, that's kind of harsh. I don't want to say any purpose, but like, that's not like providing value, I guess. Yeah. Day in your life on the weekend doing nothing is, can be entertaining to people. And don't get me wrong. I'm going to be filming those every now and then too, but 
I personally want to shift my content to be more ed- entrepreneurship focused. So like mm. if I'm just like not doing that much, I probably won't vlog. But like if I'll vlog, like if it has something to do with work or something like that, you know, like I, I actually am leasing a car and I'm going to film a video on like, oh, like how much is this costing me? Well, how mm. did I make the process? You know, so like I'm still vlogging it and showing yeah. my life in it, but I want to like, okay, how can I provide value to this video other than, hey, I got a car. And so by doing that, then I'll say, oh, okay, this is how much it costs, blah, blah, blah. And I think in that way, it'll provide value. So instead of saying like, you know, even when I bought my house, like instead of being like, oh, I bought a house, here it is. I want to show like the yeah. process of it. So everything that I do, I'm trying to find a way that like helps other people out because it's something that I wish that there was when, you know, like I was going through <laughs> that process. Like even with like consulting, for example, mm-hmm. I have a video, which I was not at Accenture that long. I was there for nine months. So it was very like short, but I I have a video where I was like, okay, I can't, I probably can't provide the best value with like, what is consulting? Cause like, I didn't work mm-hmm. there for that long and that was on one project. So I was like, okay, let me ask my friends who are in consulting to do this video with me. So, yeah. you know, like doing things like that. So I like brought on three of my friends to film about a video about consulting rather than just hearing my own voice. So, you know, I, that's like the goal with my YouTube channel is just always like providing value in some way, even if it's mm-hmm. a vlog. Yeah. It's actually kind of what I did the podcast for. It's like, I can't speak for how it's like to be a social media creator or a content creator. I don't know how it's like to be a storyboard artist. So I bring them onto the podcast so they can at least enlighten me and enlighten others as well. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. That's like at what I'm trying to do as yeah. well. So speaking of your podcast, like, do you have actual goals in mind for that? Um, This Monday, it's delayed. It's probably going to come up on Wednesday, <laughs> if I'm being honest, because it's my 100th episode. And mm. it's so funny that I'm delaying my 100th episode. <laughs> it's the one I'm late on because I literally never miss a week. Like, I've never missed a week of my oh, podcast. Wow. But uh, on this, this week, I'm like... Oh. God, it's so delayed. It's because I never do solo episodes. So whenever I'm just talking by myself, I'm like, I don't know what to say. So I've literally been postponing it because I'm like, what do I say for this? (laughs) So it's coming soon. But um, for my podcast, the real goals, I guess, I don't know. I'm kind of in a struggle with it because I love my podcast and I Mm -hmm. love the people I interview. But I'm like, do I niche down a little more? Do I only Mm. focus on entrepreneurs? Do I only focus on whatever, like social media people? Do I only focus on one thing? Because I feel like if you niche down on a podcast, it can bring in more people. But I just don't want to. So I'm like, okay, because I just like all the guests that I have. So I'm like, how do I continue doing exactly what I'm doing, but like grow? (laughs) Because it's like kind (laughs) of like, it hasn't grown that much. So I'm like, I don't want to just be at a standstill. Like I want to like, grow more so I'm like how do I grow on podcasts that's one thing I'm like struggling with so that's been the biggest thing Mm -hmm. do you have any particular mentors or advisors you go to for anything about social media creation or even about pursuing which entrepreneurial efforts you want to go for I wouldn't say I have any mentors, but I have people that I go to that like I I ask for advice or I'll talk to, but there's no specific person I would call a mentor. So for social media, you know, I have a lot of friends in the space. So like, we'll chat about it or like my manager or like business stuff. I might talk to my parents about it or other people I know that have started businesses, but it's no one specific that I would call a mentor. Okay. Because I feel like there's so many things that as an entrepreneur or as someone who's like a solopreneur, basically, you have to go through so much decision making and a lot of it, you don't know if it's gonna be right or wrong or even on the legal aspect. I know I know you probably have a lawyer or CPA or something like that for that aspect, but like even something of like, let's say for example, pursuing your podcast. Like if you were to go in a particular angle, I know like in the past, at least I, I'm like analysis paralysis, is that if I go this angle, then in the future, people are gonna think my podcast is known for this or my YouTube channel is known for this. Like, how do I do this? So I feel like I'm always stuck there. And I feel like you have that kind of figured out at least like based off of the fact of you're just trying trial and error. But to me, I just like kind of get stuck in there. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't really like, ask anyone specific. I Mm. ask people things like, oh, I'll talk to my boyfriend about things or I'll talk to my manager about things and stuff like that and really take their advice Mm -hmm. like to heart. But I don't have anyone specific that I turn to. And a lot of times kind of going back to like being very impulsive, I won't even consult anyone and I'll just like make a change and do something (laughs) and be like, here it is. (laughs) So I I don't have anyone specific that I go to Mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Okay, this actually does 
bring up a question is like, is this one of the reasons why you're interested in consulting? Because you would think like every project, everything you do is different every day or even every project. Yes. That's why I wanted okay. to go into consulting. Like a hundred percent why I like wanted to apply to Accenture was because I saw all the different like industries that they have mm -hmm. and like all the different projects that they work on. And I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds so cool. You get so much industry experience. So that was like the main reason, like that was the only reason mm -hmm. why I wanted to go to consulting. Okay. So I know like your experience didn't seem that glamorous from the vlogs that I've seen. Were there any parallels to consulting to entrepreneurship or even similarities? There probably are for most people in consulting or for some people in consulting, there just weren't for me because I mm -hmm. was not on a project that was challenging. I wasn't on a project that I did any meaning, uh, I don't want to say meaningful work, but like it was very, I don't know why my client that I was working with mm -hmm. would pay for a consultant to do the job I did. Like it was mm -hmm. just so easy and simple and I it just like mind blows me that like they couldn't mm -hmm. even like someone from high school could have done what I was doing so like I mm -hmm. middle school could have done what I was doing it was just like I didn't feel challenged at all so it didn't feel like anything I would do with running my own business but I think a lot of people in the consulting industry do feel that way and do see mm -hmm. those parallels I wasn't there long enough and I also wasn't on a project that challenged me so yeah I don't think I could say that I did, but I know that in the industry, there are parallels. But like, despite that experience, it seems like you still wanted to pursue consulting, but exactly specifically in social media to one-on-one -on -one clients. Yes. So the one thing mm -hmm. I did not like about Accenture and just in general, like doesn't mm -hmm. Accenture or Deloitte or any other big consulting company is their size. I mm -hmm. didn't like how big they were and how it was so like not personal. And you know, you have to go through so many layers to get anything done and talk to so many people and like, I just hated that. So for me, I was like, if I start my own agency and my own like consultations, it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. I'm actually going to make an impact. I'm actually, you know, going to be able to like help these yeah. people out. Whereas that's what I felt like at Accenture. I was just like a number and this isn't to mm. bash Accenture. It's any large company. I would have yeah. felt the same way if I was at any consulting company, BCG, Accenture, Deloitte, whatever, any of the other ones, like it, I would have felt the exact same way. So I think I just like that smaller feel and like the individual connection that I had with people rather than like mm -hmm. going through so many layers. So uh, I don't know if you knew about this, but I do have the technology consulting community. I, I think like when you filled out the form that it briefly introduced that. So it is actually growing pretty big. So I was wondering like for We Bloom Social for the app, if it ever got to like a little bigger size than what you may be comfortable of, would you probably get off I mean, it's probably like way in advance but just knowing about this like do you think you would probably get a lot more co-founders have like a lot under your belt but then just move on to your next venture kind of like a serial entrepreneur probably i i don't see it going on forever like especially if mm -hmm. rella takes off like i don't think yeah. i could do both you know mm -hmm. so maybe i could maybe i'll work something out with that but i'm not someone that's like completely glued to anything like yeah like even with Rella, for example, which is the app, I like, I want to have an exit strategy. Like okay. I want to have a, I want to sell it eventually to a large company and for a lot of money. Like, just like, <laughs> that's like the end goal in my head. I'm like, I want to be able to sell this. So yeah. for me, that's what, that's like, I'm not like, oh my God, I want to be working on this when I'm 60, hmm. like, and never retire. And I don't think I'll ever retire quote unquote but like I would love to continue to do things and new things you know so mm -hmm. if that's like a serial entrepreneur then yeah totally I would love to do something like that obviously I'm not thinking about that right now like I'm thinking of an exit strategy because I think yeah. it's also important to think about especially if we're trying to raise money but that's not something that I'm I'm not like what's next what's next what's next you know I'm like okay let me do this first but I'm okay with doing other things as well afterwards. okay so I guess that's the mindset. It's not like I'm looking forward to the day when I'm not doing this because I literally haven't even started, basically. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, I I would be okay with moving on to something else. Nothing, okay. the only thing I like want to do forever and have it be mine is like my YouTube channel mm -hmm. and my podcast okay. and my, my personal brand. But my businesses, I am okay with stepping away from if that time comes, but I'm not planning on stepping away from them anytime okay. soon. Yeah. So what are actually your long-term goals then? Like, it, it seems like you want to have as many different experiences as you can, but where does it end where like you want to retire and 
um do you see yourself like 80 years old still having a youtube channel which by the way i think like that'd be really cool i would be really curious because i don't think there's any 80 year olds out there on youtube <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i mean I would love to help other people grow companies mm -hmm. or startups. So let's say I sell Rella for, I don't know, millions of dollars. Then eventually, I mean, being an investor myself or mm -hmm. being, you know, on the board of something of, or, you know, something like that, like yeah. that would be really great for me to, like that would be an ideal 20 year plan, I guess, but as of now, it's just to continue to grow Rella and continue to learn in that startup space and that startup experience. And same with WeBloom because there's so much that comes out of it. And I just love that personal connection that I have with WeBloom, which I know mm -hmm. you can't do with a huge company. So that would be, you know, just continue growing both of those. But eventually I always see myself helping other startups or other you know, entrepreneurs along the way. So I feel like it'd be cool to like be an investor one day, but I don't know how mm. people do that. Like, I think you just need to have a lot of money. Like, I think that's really <laughs> it. So <laughs> we'll see if that works out. Cause I don't think there's steps that you can do to get to that point. Mm -hmm. So um, if businesses go well, then hopefully one day, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think we see a venture capital firm far in the future. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't even know what like a venture capital firm looks like. I think it's yeah. really just like, to me, that's like, in my head, I'm like, oh yeah, that, that's something that would make sense. But like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's actually what I want to do. I just want to like help startups kind of mm -hmm. and like invest in startups. So mm -hmm. if, I guess if that's what a VC does, then sure. <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't know, like I've never worked anywhere near VC. I don't know what they do day to day. I don't know anything like that. So like, mm -hmm. I, I could be saying this and being totally wrong, but eventually I just like to help startups. So this is actually kind of something I wanted to bring up. If you ever had the opportunity to go back to corporate life, would you ever, like if it's something where you think you could learn a lot, like let's say for example, a venture capital firm reached out to you or maybe an actual like entrepreneurial uh, strategy consulting firm would reach out to you. Um, As of now, I, well, I'm never gonna say never. I would, mm. I would never say like, oh, absolutely not. Because you know, you never know. As of now, I don't see that happening and nor do okay. I want it to happen. Like I don't really want to go back to corporate America ever, but if it, like if the right opportunity came, then mm -hmm. yes, but I don't ever, I don't see that happening. Like that's okay. not a goal of mine and it's not something I desire. But mm -hmm. for example, like if I, you know, wasn't making enough money to support myself, a hundred percent, I would go back to corporate America. Mm -hmm. Like there's, no question, I would be using my experience and using my degree and trying to get a job. <laughs> but I don't, it's nothing I really desire, I guess. So for anyone that is interested in entrepreneurship, like, do you have any particular advice or even specifically on developing your own app? Um, no advice on developing your own app because I have not done that yet. But, and I guess my advice for that would be talk to people who know how to do it and who have done okay. it before rather than like trying to learn on your own. Cause I feel like that's just so hard. I guess if you can do it then props, but for me, <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather just work with someone that knows how to do it. Um, as for being an entrepreneur, I'm definitely like, it's still weird for me to be called an entrepreneur. Cause I feel okay. like I haven't been like successful enough to be called that. But for me, I guess starting something like the biggest advice I always give is to just start whatever you are interested in. Like whatever you are curious about, try doing something with it, you know? And it doesn't have to be forever. I think people think like, mm. if you start something, you can never quit it. And I'm not encouraging people to quit, but I'm also saying like, you never know until you try. So mm. nothing has to be forever. Like things can, things might not work out and that's okay. And you can still learn so much from them. So I would just continue to, be curious and continue to try things out and don't be don't be so focused on forever just like yeah. kind of take that first step and start and pivot as you need to go go change as you need to go learn as you need to as you grow but just starting and taking that first step is the is my best advice for that so what do you actually do to take care of your mental health with all of this going on yeah, um, for me, I really like having routines. So like okay. my morning routine is a really big one. Like I will have like a three hour morning routine. <laughs> like I don't like waking up and like getting straight to work. Like I would literally hate that. That stresses me out so much. So I'll wake mm -hmm. up at seven and like work at like 9.30, you know? So like two and a half hour morning routine is like my go-to. Sometimes I won't even start until like 10 a.m. if I'm mm -hmm. 
being really late. But, you know, so like, that's definitely my, like the way I kind of calm myself down is having that okay. morning routine and like taking rest days, like Saturdays, I'm not working. Like I will not answer your email on a Saturday. Cause it's just like, you can wait until Monday. Like nothing is that important. <laughs> So things like that, you know, like I, I really try prioritizing my rest days and not working every single day of the week, not working every single hour of the day. So just having those, that rest and having that time for yourself, which comes seasonally, you know, like when I was working at Accenture, mm -hmm. I didn't have that. Like I, mm -hmm. I worked nonstop because my goal was to quit and then eventually have those rest days. Mm -hmm. So I think it's one of those things that it, it depends on your situation and there might be moments of your life where you do need to work every single day, but maybe it's only a one month period and then you can okay. finally take that break, you know? So right now I'm at the season where I'm able to rest in a few months. Maybe I won't be able to rest as much as I'm resting now. Like I think rest is obviously very important. Like get your sleep, like mm -hmm. get eight hours of sleep a day, you know, don't like burn yourself out. But I think there are seasons of working more than others and that's okay as well. Um, so for me, it's really just that routine, like having routines is really how I like kind of don't burn out. Um, mm -hmm. and then, you know, I like to journal, I like to meditate. I like working out like all of those things I do like for me, it's not for anything else so, because everything else I do is like for something else, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. yep. it's not just for me. So those things that I do are like solely for me, nothing else matters. You know, I'm only doing it for my own benefit. And I think that is like helps with my mental health a lot. Mm -hmm. So do you have any particular hobbies? Like I actually skipped over this question, which I ask every single podcast guest of mine is if you had all the time in the world, what would you be doing? Um, I've always hated the hobbies question. Cause I'm like, oh God, <laughs> what are my, what are my hobbies? Like when I was um in school, I would be like, oh, I have a YouTube channel and that's my mm -hmm. hobby. Yeah. Now that's my job. So I'm like, it can't be a hobby. <laughs> um, so a hobby of mine, Ah, uh, this is so sad. I need to learn more hobbies. Well, I recently took um, my first tennis lesson. So I guess Ooh. like <laughs> trying to do more things that I don't know how to do like that, you know, I, I want to continue to take those tennis lessons. So mm -hmm. maybe focusing on one thing and like doing that, I guess, like, like something like tennis or, you know, tennis, I guess is the only one that comes to mind. <laughs> That's, you're, this is a rude awakening that I like need hobbies because I, <laughs> I don't have any, but tennis is like the one thing that I, I started recently and I want to continue. So mm -hmm. I'll say that. I wouldn't say it's a bad thing to not have hobbies because it just means whatever you're doing is either like you don't have time for hobbies or maybe all what you're doing, you love so much that it is kind of a hobby that, but you don't consider because it's your source of income. Right. I think that's kind of how it works for me. Cause I love what I do. Like I yeah. really, really do. So for me, it's like, I'm fine with just like doing what I'm doing and then like watching Netflix or watching mm -hmm. YouTube or not, you know, reading, you know, I love to read and stuff like that. And like, that's kind of like my downtime, mm -hmm. but I really love learning as well. So like, like I really wanted to pay for this one Harvard course. It's like, um, it's like a certificate that you get, I think from Harvard mm -hmm. and you don't have to apply or anything. I think you just like pay that money to get the certificate. And I was like, I really want to do this, but I, I feel like I don't have time to do this. <laughs> so, you know, things like that, like I would love to just like learn things that maybe I'm not learning right now or I'm not doing right now that, but then I'm like, is that a hobby? I don't know. So things like that I don't have time for would be like learning something new that I'm not already in. So where do you actually find the inspiration on what to learn? Like, it looks like you find a lot of inspiration from like YouTube, podcasts, or maybe even other people around you. Like, where do you find inspiration? I love podcasts. It helps mm -hmm. me a lot with finding inspiration. Um, watching other people on YouTube and watching other people similar to me on YouTube, reading a lot of books. So though that's probably the biggest place where I find inspiration. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't find as much inspiration like in person. It's really more okay. like, podcast books and TV slash YouTube. Mm -hmm. So what are you currently listening or reading to then? I'm listening to the startup podcast, which is yep. so great. Like, I cannot believe I literally, I, like, I just found it. Uh, I heard people always talk about it and I was like, eh. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, this is the best <laughs> podcast ever. Um, so that one, and then I'm reading Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Oh, I've I heard really about that one. I love yeah. that book. Yeah, so mm -hmm. far, it's really, really great. Okay, so I have three final questions for you. So what is on the horizon for you in 2021? Um, really just Rella, like that really, that's mm -hmm. all I'm focusing on. Well, not all I'm focusing on, but the big thing I'm focusing on. And I'm hopefully, okay. 
hopefully the first version is out before the end of 2021. Mm -hmm. And where can we find you on social media? <laughs> you can find me at Natalie Barbu and then the Real Real Podcast, um, WeBloomSocial.com and then RellaSocial.com. Arella already has her own social media. It has, it's not going to be a social media, but it has its website. So it's called okay. Rella's. Rella was taken, so we went with Rella Social. Um, <laughs> so we're like, yeah, that it just was easier. But um, yeah, RellaSocial.com. It has a website where it's just kind mm -hmm. of like shows the app and you can like Ooh. sign up and like you can join the influencer platform already. Oh, wow. So like technically you're just building a database of clientele technically before it even is out? Right. So okay. you can't do anything with it, but it's good for our knowledge of like people that are signing up already. And like okay. you'll, you'll get notified if like once the beta comes out and then you'll be like the first influencers on the platform. Nice. So I'll definitely link everything down below in the description, show notes, wherever this will be. But lastly, what can we do to support you? Oh, thank you. Um, this is so great. I really loved this podcast. It's stuff that I usually don't talk about. Um, <laughs> You can, I would say just really the biggest help right now is if you are an influencer, content creator, social media manager, you work in social media, or you're a brand that wants to work with more influencers, whether that's gifting campaigns, just creating relationships with them, then please uh, take like the survey on the website or at least mm -hmm. sign up for like the beta version, just cause it just, it can prove that like we actually have people that are interested in this. Mm -hmm. So that would be the only thing I would say. All right. And lastly, if you guys are not in any of that space, definitely check out Natalie on Instagram or YouTube. I, I am in love with her YouTube channel. Like Thank I'm you. actually not really a big YouTube consumer, ironically, <laughs> but it's just because one of those things where exactly what you said is you like to provide value. So whenever I'm watching your videos, I feel like I'm actually getting value. So that is something that's like, I'm eating lunch and I'm watching a video and I'm learning something from it. So it's like, oh. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. That means so much. Thank you. Cause I always, you know, you'll see like people watching, but like if, until like you see a face to the name or yeah. like, you know, you don't, I also sometimes feel like, oh, is my, my content's so repetitive. It's so boring. It's so, mm. you know, whatever. So hearing that is really encouraging. So thank you. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to have you on my podcast. Finally. Uh, it yeah. is so very excited for this to go out. So that way so many other people can find value in this. Great. Thank you. All right.